Hi everybody, it's Cash. Welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, today I'm going to talk about healing and uh, specifically a technique I used which may have contributed to a wounded cat becoming healthy again. As you may know, a cat has adopted me. I think it was domesticated originally. The owner, for whatever reason, threw it out. And she landed at my door. And I took her in. And then one night she went out. She didn't come back. And when she finally did return, a couple of days later, she was in a terrible state. She was scratched. Her paw was wounded. She was limping everywhere. It was really, really bad. And as well as the idea of taking it to the vet and getting it sorted out, I actually practiced a technique that I learned a while ago on her. And within 24 hours, she went from limping to walking fairly normally. So I'd like to talk about that today and tell you what it was. Um, because since being a very, very small boy... I have been absolutely fascinated with healing. In fact, when I was a kid, relatives would come over and go, so what do you want to be when you grow up then? You know that old question? And even when I was five or six, instead of saying, I want to be an astronaut or a scientist or whatever, I would say, I want to heal people. I want to touch them and heal them. That never came to pass, obviously, but it was what I said as a kid. And I think it may be because my parents were Christian scientists. My dad specifically, not my mother so much, but my father. And when I was ill with all the kind of diseases that kids got in the 60s, measles, mumps, chicken pox and so on, whooping cough even, uh, I had all those things, but I never saw a doctor. My parents would simply call in this woman who was a Christian science practitioner and she would sit over me, do some kind of weird mystical incantation thing, whatever that was, and I would be fine that same day. The problem would go away. And indeed, over my life, since then, I have resorted to Christian science to help me through various illnesses and stuff I've had. There's a great misunderstanding, as far as I can tell, about Christian science. People think it's just the denial of anything being wrong. No, oh, no, 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 no. Don't talk to me about that. It's, uh, it, there's no such thing as disease. It's all erroneous. It's not true. That's not how it works. Um, if I had to go and see a doctor, I would. It's because in my believing book, I say, doctors treat you for disease. That's what they're there for. But in the end, ultimately, you heal you. Your body heals itself. What Christian science basically seems to say, and again, I'm not a Christian scientist, so I don't want to speak for them. But what it seems to say is, don't label a disease. Once you label it, you own it. You make the problem your own. You take it on as part of your identity. Instead, Take on your spiritual self, your perfection as a reflection of the divine. Take that on as your identity. Uh, because disease, illness, pain, whatever, is a low vibration state in this low vibration body that we have. Whereas at our core, on the inside, we are... Each one of us has a connection to the divine. An umbilical to cosmic forces that make us perfect. People call it God, but it's divine consciousness. On the inside, we are perfect. We resonate at a very, very high frequency. It's only this thing, this casing we walk around in, that is low vibration. And so because I was really, really interested in healing, a few years ago, I had a podcast called The Life Quiz, and I invited on a guy who was a Christian science practitioner called Don Ingwerson. Fantastic man. It's one of the best conversations I've ever had. But I asked him, how do 
Christian science practitioners heal people. Because it's not Reiki. They are all about the perfection you are on the inside. So he told me this technique. And what he said was that because of our divine core, because at our center we are very high vibration, we are as close to perfect as it's possible to be because of this animating force within us, this God force. And because of that, if we focus on that aspect of ourselves, if we dwell on our perfection rather than labeling our imperfection and making that a part of identity, if we do that, then the vibration of the body rises and we get well. Now, there are many things can stand in the way of that. For instance, doubt or cynicism. Um, poor nutrition, not exercising, all the things that the body needs in order to get well. Clean air, sunshine, optimism, you know, all those kind of things. Those are important too. But if those are in place, then according to Don Ingwerson, the key to getting well is to align the outer with the inner, the physical with the divine. It was such an intriguing idea. And he said that he'd been healed many times uh, by Christian science in that way. So the question then remains, how do you align with the divine? It's all very well saying that, but you know, on the inside, you may be perfect, but the outside has to deal with bills and pain and relationships and a whole bunch of stuff that drags down the vibration. Now, I'm not quite sure how other people do this. Maybe through prayer, perhaps? Meditation? In my case, I use a book by Paul Selig called I Am The Word. And in I Am The Word, the channeled beings suggest that you say, I am word through my body. I am word through my base chakra. I do it through my chakras during meditation. I am uh, word through my heart chakra and I feel it. And then I am word through my physical body. I am word through my being. And by the time I get to this, I am word through my being. I feel aligned with my being, my inner core of perfection. That's the closest I can get to meeting up with my divine core. But at that level, it raises the vibration phenomenally. And at that level, I feel that there is room for healing. And I think that's what Christian science practitioners do. That's how they heal. It's not a laying on of hands. The practitioner basically affirms their own perfection and gets aligned with that, they can then imagine your perfection too. And their high vibration causes your vibration to rise as well. That's what I think happens. So when it came to dealing with Olive, the cat, she would just lie in a corner of the room. It was almost too painful to walk. She just couldn't get up. So one night, I lay on the floor with my hand on her hurting leg. I don't think I needed to touch her, actually, but that's what I did. I lay on the floor and I touched her leg with my hand. And then I meditated. I wasn't projecting any kind of energy. I wasn't projecting health 
uh, you know, all that sort of stuff that we tend to do with prayer, where we go, please help, please make them well. I didn't do any of that. I simply focused on my own perfection. And I imagine her to be her perfection too. And both of us rising in vibration together. And the following day, she was walking with barely a limp. Slight stiffness, but barely a limp. Now, the argument can be made, yeah, of course, she probably got well anyway. I agree to that. That could easily be the case. But the change was pretty rapid. And it felt like we'd actually connected at the spiritual level, where at the physical level, obviously, we couldn't connect. Now, I've done this on myself. When I've pulled muscles or uh, I have a back pain or something, instead of dwelling on the pain and labeling it as, oh, my sore back, I simply do my meditation and focus on the perfect being that I am at my core. Allow that vibration to permeate my physical self. And let the perfection that is my core make my imperfect body get well. And it's worked a few times. So that's the technique that I think Christian scientists use. I will never know whether anything I did that night worked on healing Olive. But she was walking within 24 hours. And this has me really intrigued now. What else can be done with this technique beyond healing? Maybe that's the secret to the law of attraction, to getting what we want in life, to attracting relationships or money. It's alignment. It's not, please give me health. Please give me money. That's what I'm coming around to think. All right, so uh, I'll see you very soon, guys. Subscribe, like, share. You know the drill. I'd be very grateful. Uh, Otherwise, I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.